that's probably all you ever hear about Alfred Hitchcock, that he's the master of suspense. But how did he do it? In order for suspense to work, the character on screen had to be an everyday person. He often described it as an innocent man pulled into a bizarre series of events. The audience is terribly worried because the same thing can happen to them. He puts this person in motion, running from something, hiding from something. And I know what's coming next. And I say, do you? And therefore, that's the avoidance of the cliché, automatically. They're expecting the cliché. And I have to say, um, we cannot have a cliché here. And despite common misconception, putting suspense into a dark, creepy environment is not necessary. Hitchcock's settings tend to bring crime out into the open. They become a functional part of the suspense. In North by Northwest, the flat, empty terrain becomes a trap with no place to hide. The crop duster, a normal part of this farmland, becomes an imminent threat. What seems to be the trouble, Captain? Breaking the cliché also applies to characters. Hitchcock's criminals tended to be upper-class citizens whom you'd never suspect, and the policemen and politicians are usually the bumbling fools, the innocent are accused, and the villains get away with everything because nobody suspects them. He has to be an attractive man. He is not a murderer in the sense of a fiction murderer where the tendency would be to make him look sinister and you'd be scared of him. Not a bit. He had to be charming, attractive. If he weren't, he'd never get near one of his victims. To further stir things up, Hitchcock would often trick the audience into following the wrong person. He said the easiest way to worry people is to turn the tables on them, make the most innocent member of the cast the murderer, make the next door neighbor a dangerous spy, Keep your characters stepping out of character and into the other fellow's boots. Creating this feeling of unpredictability makes the situation ripe for suspense. But suspense is a dimension above that linear story. For Hitchcock, it's the way the storyteller involves the audience, manipulates their expectations, plays with their senses, that's the root of suspense. The essential fact is to get real suspense, you must let the audience have information. Research into his works has revealed a three-step suspense structure. First, the protagonist has a secret hidden from the other characters. Hitchcock gives us special access to these secrets so that we're seeing private things that we wouldn't see in real life. The secret tends to evoke basic feelings from childhood, like the fear of getting caught. The secret could be a dead body, or stolen money, or even brake fluid leaking out of a car. It could be someone needing to be rescued, like Paul in 4 o'clock. Once the audience is primed with a secret, Hitchcock then creates a series of close calls to tease the secret almost getting out. As the bumbling bystanders get closer to the secret, the audience begins feeling a delightful anticipation. We feel it as the doctor steps near the note from Anthony. And he didn't say anything that might give you an idea of where he went. As the maid starts mopping while Marnie sneaks away with stolen money. And the police will make an appearance. They don't really suspect anything, they just happened to be there to make Marion Crane nervous. This is how Hitchcock reels in the audience. As the helpless character on the screen is pressured into fear, audience empathy rises, and suspense rises. The body almost gets discovered, the stolen money almost gets found, and when a victim needs to be rescued, someone almost stumbles upon them, but then doesn't notice. It's a playful dance, teasing the audience. And just like a gambler gets more addicted when he almost wins, believing he's on a winning streak, the suspense viewer gets addicted to watching the movie. Now let's take the old-fashioned bomb theory. You and I sitting talking will say about baseball. Tell the audience at the beginning 
that under the table and show it to them. There's a bomb and it's going to go off in five minutes. Now we talk baseball. What are the audience doing? They're saying, don't talk about baseball. There's a bomb under there. Get rid of it. But they're helpless. They can't jump out of their seats up onto the screen and grab hold of the bomb and throw it out. Putting the audience into this helpless situation where they want to reach in and change the events on the screen, it's a skill that few directors have. And the audience actually feels Hitchcock's presence manipulating events. And the audience becomes actively involved in a game with the director. But once suspense is created, it must be relieved. Hitchcock said, We have to fool the audience. They think we're going in one direction, and we must have a twist in the end. Just like a magician revealing that the coin is in the other hand, a sudden surprise comes out of nowhere and gives you an outcome you didn't expect. A twist. If you put an audience through the mill like that, you must relieve it. The bomb must be found and quickly thrown out of the window. Then it goes off out there and the audience are relieved. 